Uh, hi, welcome to Awesome Talk. I'm Ryan. That is uh, I am Rick. It's Mr. I am Andrew, and that is Mrs. Sarah. And uh, we are here with Daryl Montgomery. Hell, aside from being a podcaster like we are, you you also are a musician and a videographer. And uh, so, have you had any uh, interesting projects going on since last we spoke? <laughs> well, really, uh, my main you know my main thing is doing production. So whether I'm like it's uh, one thing that I'm, I guess the key thing that I'm working on right now is, uh, uh the new Christian death video. Oh, sweet. And, nice. and then I'm doing the first documentary ever about Christian death. Wow. Ooh, cool. So, so, really? that's, that's yeah, that's yeah, really absolutely. sweet. Absolutely. What, uh, what got you on this path to start doing a uh, video production? Um, well, really, uh, when I was a BMX freestyler back in the day, back nice. in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, you know, we were filming each other riding. But, like, you know, then it was a big production. Like, you know, when you were doing well, – filming meant the idea that you had your camera, your recording unit, and your big-ass battery pack. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so – like you know and the battery pack you know you carry this heavy monster around and it and you get like you know 15 minutes of recording but <laughs> <We're> <laughs> technology yes! <laughs> it's the Lord power edge. <laughs> right, exactly and so and that really got me into video and then um uh i was already a musician i started uh djing in 72 i started wow. playing bass in 76 nice. and then um uh, I was in a punk band, Public Disturbance, from 1981 until 1984, and then I started my industrial project, Abstinence, in 85, and Abstinence was the thing that fused together all my kind of, all the different sides of what I do, whether it's drum programming, percussion, creating instrumentation, power tool instrumentation, the whole nine yards, and the use of video. And then it wasn't until really, I guess, 80, 89, that I really got into hardcore video production. Right. And that's when I started doing documentaries. And in my class, I asked my students, I kind of baited, baited them and said, well, what do you think that the approval rating of Martin Luther King in the black community is? Or was on... Uh, April 3rd, 1968, which was the day before he was assassinated. Right, yeah, right. And I said, and remember, this is four years after the March on Washington. And I just kind of baited them with that. And they're like, oh, the black community, four years after March on Washington. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, 70%, 80%. Like nobody said anything lower than like 70, 75%. Right. And I said it was 24%. Yeah. 24. In the black community, you don't even want to know. Go back and look at the the archives and look at what the New York Times and the Wall and the Wall Street Journal and the Post <laughs> yeah. and all those people said about it. Right, and oh, it, yeah. you know what they do is they take real history and they turn it into pop history. It's yeah. almost like every event that ever happened in someone like take Martin Luther King for example. It's almost like every event that ever took place in his life all happened in the same week. When you sure. look back, you you know, and that's the and they look at it as more. Highlights yeah, well, rather than work. It's they, yeah, they condense it. They condense right. it yeah. all it's down. The to you, you take you take twenty years of a man's life and you condense it into a fifteen-minute press release. Yeah, it's MLK right? quick And notes. that's about yeah. And it's like ah, oh, highlights of Martin Luther King. Yeah, right. Well, see, you know, I mean, as an old punk rocker, I'm not, I kind of use the uh, Chomsky model. Chomsky was once asked like, why do you try to push? Why are you pushing all this information on people? And this was uh, at soon after, this was in response to uh, uh, the release of Manufacturing Consent. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm not trying to push anything on anybody. Like, you know, I am a researcher. And so I try to give information to people who want it. So then really like when you brought up the 9-11 installation, um, because I was co-founder of Shashama Arts in New York, I had access to a number of venues in Times Square and so on and so forth. So then I was just like, okay, so um, I want to do this thing. And I devised this thing that came from uh, 
this guy had done this installation at uh, PS1, mm. and it was an installation of uh, Jim Mensa or something like that. In any case, he had done an installation that was basically uh, all of his FBI files that he had put up and artfully kind of posted, and that was the art. So then I was just like really inspired by that. Like he had gotten his documents and showed that he, as just a mid-level artist who was making a few statements, had gotten followed around so much so that his friends were followed, that his, it found out that one of the, one of his girlfriend, one of his ex-girlfriends was actually an informant. So this Ooh, girlfriend, wow. did, this, the girlfriend wasn't really a girlfriend. She just, she just came around to be somebody who could get close to him to monitor him. Yeah. So then in any case, so then that gave me the idea of doing this installation where basically since everybody was debating when 9-11 happened, everybody was debating everything like hypothetically. And I said, you know, the documents are there. Like, you know, the, there are tons of documents there's a document trail that we need to pay attention to, I guess is the point. Right. Yeah, so yeah. then like the down, the Downing Street memo, for instance, mm -hmm. everybody talked about that, like uh, down, like, you know, and they were like, well, it, was, it said this and it was about that. And everybody talked about the other things other than that. It's a transcript. It's that's what the Downing Street memo is. It's a transcript. Right. So then like, you know, I posted, I posted the transcript on the door. And as you, as you saw on the website, I don't know whether you saw the video for the tour, but then we had a, uh, I had a um, loose change playing on a, in a projection and then just tons of documents, you know, um, stuff from Sibel Edmonds, um, stuff from other whistleblowers and the idea that like, you know, well, okay, well, you can write off these other people, but how do you write off the firemen? And how do you write right. off all the other people? The and so, and right, and, and the thermite and stuff. So in any case, the tactics that I try to use are always connected to what the subject matter is. So like in class, for instance, um, I had been using, since most of the students that I teach are from uh, under-resourced areas and they're mostly black and brown, I, so what I did was, especially they come from Jamaica, Queens, uh, East New York, Bed-Stuy, so on oh, and so yeah, forth. Yeah. And so the Rockaways. And so what I did was, is I created uh, the curriculum that I created, which is called Purpose Lounge, I cr basically I focused that on at first the um, Greensboro sit-ins because they were just started by four young black men. So then I was trying to show them models of young people that look like them that stood up mm. because most of the models that they see when people say, hey, you can make it, they come from backgrounds that don't look anything like them nor do they identify with it in any way so then it's like, okay, well, you're trying to, you know, you're, it's like you're telling me I can do karate, but I don't know karate, so what's your point? And so um, I felt like for the first three years I did that, I felt like it got to a certain point, it broke through, but then I realized that like when I was working on my syllabus this summer for this school year, I was like, wait a minute something's not really resonating and it's not getting to the primary point. So then what I did was, is then I said, okay, let me change it up and not start with kind of an esoteric thing that's completely disconnected from what they know. It's like, okay, let me go to something that they think about. So then it was like, okay, let's talk about, so I start with the Northern migration and then teach them about redlining. So then you can understand Ooh. So then, so then instead of, cause they're always told society tells them you're just from lazy stock, just get up and do some work. So oh, on yeah, and so yeah. forth. And then, so when you tell them about the Northern migration, I'm like, do you know about the Northern migration? They say, no. I'm like, okay, this is when people left their family and everything else they knew just to find work and to build their lives. And so like, you know, they came up here, which for them would have been like, you know, your great grandparent came up here. They go to, they move, they can only move to a certain area because as people of color, they could only move to certain areas. Right, yeah. I made sure as an activist, the one main thing that I wanted to do was make sure like, okay, I do everything out in the open. So 
no one could ever, ever say, well, you know, he did blah, blah, blah. It's yeah. just like, you know, I'll tell you everything that I've ever done. Ever. Yeah. I'm an open book, you know, and like, you know, I don't paint myself as perfect, but I'm certainly not a criminal. And there's the point is yeah. the idea of pointing out the idea of where are the where are the cracks in the veneer that you can punch through right. to show like for instance with the Christie thing I'm glad you brought that up yeah. and enough people have talked about that but to me the key point in all that is the idea that there he keeps saying that all these people have all these political agendas for why they're hypothesizing about why the bridge was closed yeah, or they're all against you know, me yeah. but it's like then dude say why the bridge was closed. Right. Like, yeah. right? <laughs> Something. Like, you know, and I was really happy because, like, as soon as the story came out about Hoboken, like, look, if I, I were her, I would give every bit of documentation I had, I would demand, and then I would demand, I'm like, I will do a lie detector test. Right. And I defy anybody else to do one. And then we were watching uh, Up This Weekend, and then that's when we saw them at her actually say, hey, I'll take a lie detector test. I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said it! She said right. it! <laughs> yeah, right? okay. Tell people where they can find you, what to look for about everything that you do. What, where, where can people find you and your work? If you simply go to s6k.com, you'll see everything you need to know about what we do. Yeah. Okay. Simple. I like it. I like All it. Right. Boom. That, and that's, Ladies and gentlemen. The, that's the letter S as in Sam or sector, the <laughs> numeral sex. six and the letter K because people have actually written out S six K like S S E X six K. It's like S six K. I'm like, what? Dude, give, give people your Facebook address because dude, I love reading your status updates like I mean, okay it's it's facebook.com forward slash d-a-r-r-y-l montgomery hell dash hell that's m-o-n-t-g-o-m-e-r-y dash hell H -E -R -R -R. go there yes go H -E there hockey stick. Yeah. It, this clink goes out to daryl montgomery hell yes and I want to say thank you very much for being on Awesome Talk, and we will be in touch, and you will be here soon, I hope. Like, fuck, you're going to be here soon. Man. Right on. All right, man. Daryl, take it Darryl. easy, man. Take keep care, up, man. Keep, keep up the fight, and d just keep doing it awesome. Keep fighting the good fight, and keep teaching people how to fight. All power to all the people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much, my friend. Right on. Have Peace a good out. night.